Now, an accident at Bwedi Jiangsheng on the Kumasi Accra uh, road involving a coach and an articulator truck has left several people injured. At least four of the victims are said to be in critical condition. Preliminary information we have indicates uh, the bus driver lost control after running into the articulator truck, which made a sudden U turn. The bus first hit the rear of the articulator truck before running into a ditch. Now, first, let's listen to some eyewitness accounts. My colleague Ohim Interior is following the story, joins me via Skype. Uh, good morning to you, Ohim. First of all, help us understand what the eyewitness uh, was telling us in that video. Yes, uh, Mama V, this is uh, Kwesi Ando, a trader from the Kumasi Central uh, Market uh, who traveled to Togo with other uh, traders to buy wares from Togo. And he says the bus uh, left uh, a flower last night, and whilst they were on their way to Kumasi, they've all, almost reached Kumasi, and upon reaching Wadi Junction, all that they saw was that the bus ran into the rear of the articulated track. And at that point, the passengers on board, what they could do was to shout, Jesus, Jesus, shout support, and then they managed to uh, leave the, the bus. And Ahmed, do we know the number of people on, on this bus? Yes, I have been speaking to occupants uh, on board the bus, and the information they give me is that 16 people were on board. Apparently, it was a full bus, but because it was traveling from Aflawo to Kumasi on the way, some alighted. So at the time of the accident, they were left with only 16 uh, people on board, including the driver. Uh, so eight people uh, are currently on admission at the hospital. They are the ones who sustained uh, injuries, but out of the eight, four, as we speak, are in critical condition, but the rest have been treated and discharged. Those who have been treated and discharged the driver's mates, and then few of the passengers who were on board. Mm. So this is the bus. How about the truck? Uh, the truck driver and any other persons on board that vehicle as well? For well, the truck, uh, it has been parked at the K University police station uh, whilst a investigations continue to the accident. But the bus is still at the accident scene. Let, let me give you this scenario. The, the accident scene, at first it used to be a traffic island. Remember the, there were four of these uh, traffic islands on the main Kumasi Ejitu Road. Residents of Kumasi called for the removal of these uh, traffic islands and the Ministry of Road and Transport, uh, especially the Ministry of Road, uh, heeded to the poor and awarded contracts to a contractor to remove those traffic islands and send them into intercessions. So per the current road design, if you are traveling from Accra and you want to uh, branch or take a detour to say uh, Bodhi Township, you need to uh, assess a semi-like uh, uh, traffic uh, roundabout there before you can join the main road. But we're told the bus, it was, as a, it was coming from Accra towards Kumasi. The articulated truck driver wanted to turn left into the body township and he did not observe traffic so the bus driver had no option but to run into the rear but down on the right hand side of the road is this a uh, long uh, very deep uh, ditch so the bus ran into the ditch and as we speak it stole there though the officials the police and the road safety officials have sent a recovery truck to the place to uh, tow the vehicle away it is still there mm. 
Uh, and uh, is, it, is it causing any particular incident in terms of traffic? Is that also causing traffic on that stretch? It is not, actually, but just that because, you know, human nature, people are curious, because they've had, they've had the accident on radio, probably they have seen groups at that point. When uh, motorists get to the point, they'll slow down uh, to watch what is happening. But I've seen these officers, especially the MTTD officials, uh, become on anybody who stopped at that point uh, to drive on. So it is not actually impeding traffic, I must say, because the bus is in the ditch, which is about five or three meters away from the main road. But because of curious uh, spectators and people who want to take a look at it, they are there, and police are also there to assist the management mm. of traffic and mm. through traffic in that regard. Finally, Ohimin, do we know if arrests have been made? For now, it is too early to say, because when I spoke to the police uh, officers at the scene, what they told me was that now their concentration is to ensure those things are safe. And with the support of the fire service and ambulance service, they managed to convey the injured victims to the nearby NUSC hospital and then Confanochi hospital, where we are told the, those in critical conditions have been sent to. So, as for now, nobody has been arrested. But we do know that the two drivers, the driver of the bus and that of the articulated truck, uh, the Road Traffic Act, are all suspects in the accident. I'm grateful, Ohimi, for the updates that you've given us on this accident that just happened. Uh, you know, some few minutes uh, ago, or him in Teria, or in the few hours, or him in Teria, my colleague in Kumasi with Insura FM with an update. It's an operation by the small scale mining task force has uncovered dredging boats in their numbers on River and Cobra in the western region. The boats, known as Shanfar, are largely responsible for contamination of river bodies. The latest revelation comes after the task force had destroyed about 250 of them in a two-day operation in parts of the region. The small-scale mining task force believes faceless financiers of illegal mining are fighting back, getting new boats back into the rivers. Nanayao Jima traveled overnight with a team on the anti galamsey operation to Pristia and its environs and came through with this report. One Shanfine boat costs at least 15,000 cities, but illegal miners dare to acquire them to dredge for gold in rivers. <laughs> Members of the tax force pull a Shanfan boat to the bank of the river for destruction. Others go after defiant dredgers who decided to stay put despite the presence of the tax force. Enchi Abre is a resident here. <laughs> They came to this place on the boat. We asked them to leave, but they refused. We went to report them to the tax force of Christia. They got wind of their coming and left. They returned after days. We tried to do it ourselves, but they outnumbered us. Members of the tax force pursued the dredges and arrested three of them on the river. Two of them admitted to have traveled from the Volta region to the west to man a boat here. The other claims to have gone there to help them pack their machines out of the place. Boss, Agbe is your boss. So, Agbe, Agbe is Agbe who built the machine for you. Senior man, day. who is the senior man? You did for where? You did for yours. You don't know him. You are working with somebody, but you don't know that person. You don't know the person that you are working with, only Agbe that you know. Okay. The presence of the machines stretch along the river for as far as the eye can see. They are operational all week except on Fridays. More Shanfang equipment continue to be discovered here on the Ancobra River. The task force are now going after these Shanfang equipment even though their operators or owners are nowhere to be found. Daily dredging of the waterbed by many groups 
has caused the river to lose its natural clean look to deep brown sites. Now, Ancobra, which is the main source of water for the people of Container and Rioso, is virtually unusable. Those who have no option have to fetch the water and allow it to settle before they drink. Others buy sachet water or resort to ponds and other unwholesome sources as alternatives. Here is Mr. Abre speaking for residents once again. Yeah, but when we moved here, the river was very clean and we used it for everything. Now we no more use them. Sometimes we treat it with alum before we use. About 201 engines were destroyed here at Rioso and Container after some had been dismantled on the first day at Himain. Suspects arrested together with six pumping machines and the motorbike seized in the operation were handed over to the police. Leader of the tax force, Bracey Andor, is saddened at the level of pollution of the river. And as you can see, the dredge, the dredge machines are over 200. And in fact, I'm very sad because uh, driving these people away is not easy. It's not an easy task. But so far as we have promised Ghanaians that we will help to sanitize the system, we will not stop. After hours of pursuing illegal miners and their equipment, the overwhelmed but exhausted tax force had to retreat for the day. For Joy News, Nana Yaojima reporting. Now, an unannounced visit by Lands and Natural Resources Minister Kweku Asumachreme appears to give credence to concerns by a section of Ghanaians that the war on illegal mining is crumbling in spite of the many interventions. The illegal miners have outwitted the lean team of the Forestry Commission to destroy 80 hectares of the 15,823 hectare fury forest reserve in the western region town of Emiasin Suta. Latif Idris has been traveling with the sector minister and has more in this report. It was the Oda Forest Reserve in January 2020. About seven hectares of that forest reserve was pillaged by illegal miners. Today, it is the Fury River Forest Reserve in the western region. 80 hectares of the 15,283 hectares of forest reserve has been pillaged by illegal miners who we are told operate deep at night. Uh, combined with the staff strength, the Forestry Commission staff strength here, uh, we, we, we adopt a strategy with informant and then those uh, equipment are retrieved and most of the people are arrested. What is not uh, motivating us enough is the uh, punitive measures given by the court. Recently, you can see, as I told you, seven people were arrested here, here. Uh, uh, precisely where we are just uh, uh, the Fury River. So uh, all the punishment the court gave was 700 Ghana cities uh, uh, as a penalty and it was not uh, motivating enough for our boys because to, 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 to gather resources and then arrest armed people, retrieve two pump machines and at the end, at the risk of your life, and the court to um, award a penalty of 700 cities for 600 cities for the pe people to go scot free. I think that is not motivating enough. Dozens of artificial ponds created from abandoned mined outputs dotted the heavily battered forest reserve. One of the topical issues in the fight against illegal mining, popularly known as Galamse, has to do with the missing of some seized excavators. Responding to questions about the number of excavators that have been confiscated or sold, Mr. Sumatrame said, No excavator has been sold, of which I am aware of. As I speak to you now, I am yet to take full inventory together with the Minis, sorry, the, the committee in charge of, yes, interministerial committee to ascertain the figures involved. Now, Ashanti Regional Security Council has assured of adequate measures to prevent escalation of violence between two feuding factions over installation of Chief Butcher at Kasi and Kumasi. Regional Minister Simon Osei Mensah says RepSec 
A study now reports by an investigative committee for appropriate action on the matter. The assurance comes as 16 people were arrested in connection with Tuesday's violent clashes and they are now awaiting prosecution. Or him and Terry of our security desk has more on the story. Police military deployment restored calm after scores of butchers were injured after misunderstanding broke out over who should be installed the chief butcher. A three-member committee led by the regional chairman of the Peace Council had started work before the latest incident. Meanwhile, following RESEC's meeting on Wednesday, the claimants to the contentious chief butcher position had refrained from holding themselves as such. The decision was taken to form a three-member committee to look into the issue. They even presented their report today at the meeting of the Regional Security Council. We are now going to study and look at the recommendations for implementation. We told the installed chief butcher that brought the problem that he should not go there again and work as a chief butcher. If the issue is with being a chief, let's put that, let's separate the two things. So that he comes there, does his work, and also earn a living. But he will not come and say, I'm coming maybe to occupy the seat of a chief butcher, or maybe he's going to the office that is allocated to the chief butcher. No, he will go, he, he can go and operate as ordinary butcher as he used to be until the issue is totally resolved. Then you want to resolve in such a way that it doesn't escalate. Mr. Osei Mensa also appealed to the media, especially Alpha Radio and Zuria FM, to be circumspect in their reportage on the issue in order not to inflame passions. I'm begging two radio stations. Even though it's going to all other radio stations, but I'm making a fervent appeal to Zuria FM and Alpha Radio, I beg you, don't inflame passions. Give us the opportunity to resolve this. I beg you. Some of the comments when you hear is, is, is not the best. Please, please. So let's be very circumspect in the way we comment on this issue. We will definitely resolve it. There is a very sensitive issue, and we are all of us will have to be very careful. From Kumase for Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. And Ohim joins us again via Skype on this particular matter. Ohim, uh, apparently there are some privileges that come with the position of Chief Butcher. Reason uh, this is happening, everybody wanting to be Chief Butcher. Tell us about it. Yes, uh, Mamavi, it comes with a lot of uh, privileges, apart from the chieftaincy title and the respect that people will have to accord traditional leaders, especially at the Menshia Palace, where he, the chief butcher, will have the opportunity to uh, attend uh, meetings with the chiefs and then the king uh, as well. So uh, it gives anybody who is installed as a chief butcher, the opportunity uh, to meet uh, prominent uh, chiefs and traditional leaders in Ashanti region. Apart from this, I'm also told that the chief butcher is accorded a lot of respect, especially among the butchers uh, at, the, at the yard. And he, uh, as a, a chief butcher, gets uh, every animal that is slaughtered uh, at the yard, he gets a portion that reserved for him as a chief butcher. And beyond this, he also gets other privileges that uh, members of the yard are causing. Interesting. Uh, and typically, how do they do the selection? Uh, uh, has everybody got the, an equal chance of becoming a chief butcher? Previously, what we are told is that anytime there's a vacancy uh, at that point, the, the Sarifu Zongo uh, is one of the key people uh, who nominate and uh, take part in the installation of the chief butcher. 
And then in recent times, we are told the butchers have also been given the opportunity to select amongst them the senior member amongst them who uh, wears so much respect and accorded uh, with that maximum respect by members. So these are two scenarios probably has led uh, to the current confusion that we have at the uh, Ucha yard. But according to members of the uh, yard, they should have been given that opportunity uh, to make uh, or appoint somebody to lead them. But this time around, we are told uh, two names have come up. One appointed uh, or elect selected by the Sariki Zongo, and the other one to selected by the members of, or the butchers themselves. So this is what has created uh, confusion and tension uh, at the uh, butcher yard at Kase. Uh, how many of the butchers will the chief be presiding over? There are a lot of them. For now, we don't have the exact number, but we are told there are thousands, you know, in their in numbers. And beyond those at Kase, there are other uh, butchers somewhere who also, you know, form part of this umbrella group. So even if you are not operating from Kasi, and once you are in the Ashanti region, you still you know, have to accord the chief teacher the necessary respect, the necessary uh, support that he requires uh, to bring as chief teacher. So it's not only for the butchers at Kasi, but it is the butchers in the Ashanti region in, in a whole. But what the, finally, uh, Ohime, would this butcher also be... Uh, a person operating from the same yard that you described? Yes. Before his nomination or installation, he's supposed to be a butcher himself. And what we do know is that uh, the current uh, chief butcher whose installation has created this tension uh, has been operating from the yard at Kasi. So even beyond being the chief butcher, he's still a butcher who operates from the Kasi yard. And so yesterday, the regional minister uh, stated emphatically that, yes, uh, none of the claimants to, you know, claim, claim to be the chief butcher, you know, to continue in that regard. They should uh, stay away from position. And then uh, once they stay away from being chief butcher, they are not prevented from going to the yard to operate for butchers. So that is the, the clear scenario now. So even if this is not a, a chief butcher, it still operates as a, as a butcher. Very interesting revelations there, Oheme. But stay with me a while longer. Let's talk about the issue of the, the nurse uh, who was allegedly uh, murdered. What's the, what's the latest on this? Yes, Mama B, what we do know is that uh, two accused persons were put before the Asopa uh, district court yesterday. And then the better, the next route patient, uh, did not put raise eyebrows of, um, uh, of uh, issues of murders that have not been resolved in the Ashanti region, but also uh, created this impression that uh, police in the region have not been doing enough to resolve some of these uh, murders to the extent that uh, nurses are threatening to withdraw their services, uh, if not the perpetrators are, are brought back. So police responded by arresting people. And these two people were put before the Asoka district court yesterday. But interestingly, when they made their first bidding appearance in court, uh, their lawyer, especially the lawyer for the first accused uh, person, uh, argued in court that his client uh, should be granted bail because he has already spent almost two weeks in detention in police cells. And this is what caused violation of his human rights. So he prayed the court to grant uh, him bail. But unfortunately, uh, the court will not grant that bail. I rejected it. It followed an argument by the prosecution that yes, the police are working as uh, to arrest other accomplices involved in the dastard murder of the death root Asian. And police believe that many people will be involved. So granting him be at that stage be premature. So the, the presiding judge agreed to the argument of the prosecution and insisted that the two suspects should be remanded in 
police custody to reappear on March 11th. Thank you very much, Ohimeng Teria. Indeed, Ohimeng uh, has more in this package report. Ruth Ama Eshen was found near her Ayum New Site residence in the Bosomche district of Ashanti on February 4, 2020. Family of the mother of three who has since been buried were first to call for justice for the late nurse. The nursing fraternity, comprising 13 bodies, threatened to redraw services over her unresolved murder. The regional police command subsequently arrested two persons, one of them believed to be owner of a mobile phone found at the crime scene. Lawyer for the first accused, Bismarck in Siambuaji, argued his client continued detention amongst the violation of his human rights. You put your application before court and the trial judge will look at the evidence and the fact that bail is a discretionary. Bill does not mean that the police must take a panic decision to arrest a person simply because it's a national issue, there's a national crisis, they must take quick action. Of course, we must get the right persons. And the mere fact that it is too premature, that argument, I mean, I don't really accept that argument that it is too premature for Bill. It's a human rights issue. Anybody can be arrested. If you allow the fact that we are doing investigation, anybody can be put at the police cells. If that argument is supposed to stand, all of us are at, at risk. He says the popular driver who plies a stressful at Tomsu Road has sureties who can produce him whenever he's needed. Prosecution, led by Chief Superintendent Kofi Braguji, however, insisted it will be premature to grant the accused bail when search is ongoing to arrest the other accomplices. The court, presided by His Worship Koko Ousu Echao, turned down the bail application for lack of jurisdiction. Lawyer Insian Bwaji later told journalists he will file for bail for his client at the High Court. When we went to court today, I put an application for bail and I advanced my argument to the effect that the accused person is a commercial driver known in Seri Atunsu Road and he will settle away himself for the, court, for the trial to commence. But I also made it clear to the court that Dominic is a person who voluntarily went to the police to inquire about his phone because he got information that the police has a, a missing phone. So he went to the assembly member, the chiefs of Sevilla, to accompany him to the police station. Ordinary, somebody who is, um, has committed an offence, by conduct, will not show up at the police station. But he availed himself, he cooperated to the police. They took him to his house to check whether they could get something incriminating or connecting to the offence, but nothing was found. In fact, I put up very cogent uh, argument before the court. But the presiding judge and the prosecution disagree with my application to the, to the effect that the court has no jurisdiction to grant bail to murder suspects. In fact, our jurisprudence, I mean, is said that the district court, as a matter of fact, has no, not been a trial court, doesn't have the right to grant bail to an accused person. In fact, I will proceed to the high court, and I'm sure certainly that the, the high court judge will look at the evidence and grant bail to the accused person. The case has been adjourned to March 11, 2020. From Kumasi for Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. The Ghana's main case management center for the COVID-19 virus says it has not had any supply from the National Water Company for close to a year. The hospital explains it is, as a result, having to spend more than 3,000 Ghana CDs every week to buy water into its reservoirs. This, they say, does not uh, but well for the critical role it has to play in keeping the deadly coronavirus out of Ghana. PSC and Anayao Safo has more in the following report. Imagine going a day without water, none to drink, have a bath, or prepare meals with. It is truly an unhealthy outcome, even worse when the facility in question is a hospital, where the utility is needed to clean wounds, mop floors of wards, and to keep surgical instruments free of infection. Yeah, it's not flowing. Tremantin Benson is administrative manager at the Tema General Hospital. This challenge is for the past one year. TGH is the biggest health facility in the Tema Metropolis with 24-hour specialist and general medical services. It was designated a coronavirus case management center last month. It might seem prepared for the global epidemic, Yet an administrator there who prefers to remain anonymous opens up about its local water problems. It's an issue because patients come, the washrooms need to be closed because there is no water to flush. 
most often the Ghana Water Company lines doesn't flow at all. And so the hospital made arrangement to get a backup. So we engage the private tankers and we spend no less than 3,000 cities at least every week. That is an estimated 150,000 cities of the hospital's revenue spent on water each year, even though it is supposed to be supplied by the Ghana Water Company. The administrator, however, insists this should not affect the hospital's preparedness to contain coronavirus cases brought there. Maybe the fact that Ghana Water is not supplying water, we have nothing to do. We have the Verunica bucket, like I said, where we store water so that in case there is any need for you to wash your hands, that can be a backup plan. And then also we have the alcohol hand wash, which also we have put in place to ensure there is thorough hand washing. Is it adequate? Of course it is. Staff and families of patients who spoke with Joy News, however, disagree with the hospital management. They describe the situation as unbearable and have called for authorities to immediately intervene. In the OPD here, you know we have one of the um, commercial um, blue, uh, washrooms here. So like when there isn't enough water flowing or water is not flowing, you know this awful smell, yes. It comes to the whole um, OPD, which is not um, appealing. So we'll please to the government and then the health sector if they can aid the facility in um, implementing most of our water issues. And then most of the um, of the patients, you know, they they tend to develop um, this body odor when there isn't enough water or shortage of water. The hospital can see to see. It is embarrassing for a hospital of this repute to continuously be in this situation, she says. There is no water available most times. You can only imagine the blood and state of the mothers who deliver here. We are calling on authorities to act immediately. Water is so hard to get sometimes. We have to search and search till we reach our only option, sometimes a mortuary facility close by. The Ghana Water Company in Tema could not be reached for comment even though they considered they are aware of the challenge. Meanwhile, patients and their families are having to bring in their own water to complement hospital efforts. PSC Nanayao Safo, Joy News. Now, teacher unions in the eastern region wants government to embark on a proper consultation or drop the pre-tertiary education bill pending before parliament. They contend portions of the bill in its current form seeking to decentralize education has a tendency to affect quality of education and welfare of teachers. Maxwell Kudeko has more. At a press conference jointly held in Kufodia by Tewu, Ghana National Association of Teachers, National Association of Graduate Teachers, and Coalition of Consent Teachers, members were dropped in red bands as they put their concerns across. They intend to keep the red bands in their classrooms and the government put on hold the Pretty Education Bill. Addressing the press, Eastern Regional Chairman of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, John Serbe, said the bill in its current state would take powers and mandate from the Ghana Education Service and invested in the Regional Coordinating Council, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assembly, a situation which is said could jeopardize education in Ghana. Yeah, yeah, baby. Senior high schools will be run and managed by the Regional Education Directorates, that is the Regional Coordinating Councils. Basic schools will be run and managed by the Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies. Technical and vocational schools will be run and managed by their own director general, independent of the Ghana Education Service. By this arrangement, the Ghana Education Service will be shown off its powers and mandate and now become a very feeble coordinator. Our leaders registered their disapproval to the proposed bill, citing Sections 18, 20, 23, 30, 31, 32, and 36 <coughs> as having the tendency of destabilizing the teaching profession. In that, it will break and dismember 
the unified service now in place. They also argue the bill by its nature seeks to break the teacher's front by its decentralization agenda. The teacher unions want the teacher interest first, availability of resources, and quality education to be the foremost in the decentralization agenda. Our education director, the district education director, is now going to work directly under the, uh, the municipal chief executive. And education at the municipal level or the district level is just going to be a unit of the assembly. And you know Ghana how politics are played. How can the the, the education officer, the, the uh, district director, be given the freedom to take the decisions that will improve education at the district. You know, the political influence is there. And when you look at the sections, section 36, it means the assemblies are going to take decision, issues of discipline, employment, and all those things will be done by the assemblies. And you know, Ghana here, all the assemblies are not resourced. Most of the districts are poorly resourced, others well resourced. And when that happens, you know it is going to bring a, a disparity in our education. Maxwell Kudaka report for joining. While well, you're watching the Joy News Desk, stay with us. We'll bring you some business. Emmanuel Abadji, we are face standing by with details in business. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to business. The Registrar General, uh, Jemima Owari, says her outfit is working to upgrade its online and digital solutions systems to generate certificates online which will be accepted by banks and other financial institutions. This is to help eliminate human contact in the registration process. Jemima Owari spoke with my colleague, Norman Akwa-Hayford, when she paid a courtesy call on the management of Multimedia Group Limited. Definitely, it's better than what it was before when we were purely manual but it's still not what we want it to be we have a bit more work to do with that one we want a portal or we want an online registration whereby you will not need to come into my office at all you can sit wherever you are pay online get all the processes the, comp the profiles after you registered you know online currently you can do that but what happens is that we do not have an electronic securitized certificate with my signature and everything on it, such that you can take that one away to open your account. You get an electronically generated certificate, but most of the banks are not too conversant with that one. And so most people, even though they might register online, will still go through the traffic and come and collect the hard copy certificates. That's what I'm saying. We have it in place, but I wish and I'm pushing for it to be upgraded to make it more friendly and more you know, easy for our various businesses or customers to sit wherever they are and complete the process without coming to my office, without stepping there, without coming to meet anybody and handing any money over to them. Our online uh, payment system also had a problem initially. Yeah, I, was, I was actually going to ask you if that has been corrected. We are still in the process of correcting it. We are still in the process of correcting it. I am pushing before the uh, mid of this year to be sure that you can pay online in ease. We are currently being linked up to the government.gov payment platform. Once that happens, I believe we're going to have a, a more uh, friendlier you know, experience on our portal than we currently are. That is one of the reasons why I, I, I can agree that you go onto the portal but along the way, you might have to end up and come back to my office and come and pay. That shouldn't be the case. You should have that experience where you start from the beginning to the end, you know, and do everything online. It's definitely better. You can do your searches now online. You can download your forms online. You can start the process online. You can actually pay online sometimes. But sometimes you also have to come to the office and come and pay. That is what I want to stop. Yeah, that brings me to the question of... Um how many days, if I should ask you, you are the Register General, as of today, how many days would it take me if I have to walk into your office and register a business? For currently, the system as it is now, a business name can be done within 30 minutes. The business name, I mean, there's not much to it. Within 30 minutes to an hour, you can have a business name. It's the bureaucratic procedure 
of printing certificates, having it signed, printing profiles, and sending it down for people to collect, that is what is the delay. That's why I meant if I'm doing an upgrade of the system, I would ensure that the certificate would have my signature on it. You wouldn't need to come and collect it. Away from that, the Banana Producers Association is confident of maximizing exports within the coming weeks as stakeholders in the fruits and vegetable community sign onto a Banana Occupational Health and Safety Initiative. Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Ignatius Bafwewa, believes the move can ensure sustainable banana production. Workers within the banana production value chain can go about their daily activities without fear of not being covered under any occupational health and safety regulation. Facilitated by the World Banana Forum and Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the Banana Occupational Health and Safety Initiative is expected to cushion farmers against some hazards that come with production of bananas in Ghana. Minister of Employment and Labor Relations Ignatius Bafuria remarked the initiative will soon be replicated across all sectors of work. This manual will be given life through constant application and reference by plantation owners as well as unions and workers to enable us reduce accidents on the farms to the barest minimum. President of the Banana Producers Association, Anthony Blay, explained to Joy Business how urgent the Banana Occupational Health and Safety Initiative will be to enhancing exports of bananas from Ghana. Uh, we are faced with the huge challenge of uh, minimizing the impact of uh, the use of agrochemicals, as well as uh, relative to the fact that uh, most of the activities are manual which means that the human element, the people who are involved in the production processes, should be offered the needed protection. Meanwhile, Health Services Manager of Golden Exotics Limited, Dr. Kofi David, has details to Joy Business content of Banana Occupational Health and Safety Initiative. It's actually an occupational health and safety management system that we are setting up. So this is more of the uh, policy document, that's part one. Uh, the manual will be officially launched in February and expected to benefit women in the banana production value chain. And that's all in business. There will be more business at midday. My name is Imano Apwaji. We actually have a good morning.